Hello again, uh, this is uh, Nixon Karithi, your instructor for the course, The Role of Media in Promoting the Work of the African Free Continental Trade uh, Agreement. And uh, I'm looking forward to taking you through module three in the study of the role of the media in promoting African trade. Module number three, reporting African trade data. One of the most challenging tasks in reporting trade is finding fresh, appropriate, and up-to-date trade data for African countries. For many African countries, uh, data about their trade and productive activities is very poorly collected and disseminated. Reporters working on trade issues need to find alternative sources of data about the respective countries and their regions. Aside from finding raw data and other information relating to African trade, reporters must endeavor to interpret key trends in the data. Now, one major trend is the extent to which new trade data helps us to illustrate our society's engagement with their own economy, and also how this involvement enhances their quality of life. Trade data is more than just uh, what is bought and what is sold or how quantities differ from one uh, time point to another time point, or even how uh, to track winners and losers from trade during the period under review. Trade data is also about the subtle awareness of how daily community life across Africa and the rest of the world is inextricably dependent upon other communities uh, for, and, and also about how goods and services are exchanged between uh, these communities and vice versa. Uh, the African Center for Statistics uh, produces and disseminates quality data and comparable data and statistics in Africa to support evidence-based policy making, planning, implementation, monitoring, and reporting under the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development uh, and Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. This is the one we would recommend that journalists visit and also look for data that is applicable for them. The, the portal is divided into four main sections. There is economic, infrastructure and agriculture statistics, demographic and social statistics, statistical development, data innovation and outreach, and geospatial information management systems. The MacMap data portal allows users to access uh, tariffs charged on goods globally. The data available here includes customs tariffs, tariff rate quarters, trade remedies, and non-tariff measures. The portal allows users to compare and analyze tariffs of any specific good, for example, bananas, tea, coffee, and copper in any market in the world. The United Nations Comtrade, or the United Nations International Trade Statistics Database, is the largest depository of trade data in the world, with over 3 billion data records dating back to 1962. It offers up-to-date uh, data in overall trends in trade for specific products and also countries or regions. Uh, over 170 reporter countries and regions provide the UN Statistics Office with their annual international trade statistics data, which then gets uploaded onto the UN Comtrade portal. The IMF Sub-Saharan Africa Economic Outlook uh, reports include a comprehensive trade and economics database for African countries and regions. From here, reporters can also link to the World Economic Outlook Database uh, for, for data on national accounts, for inflation, and unemployment rates. You can also find data on uh, balance of payments, fiscal uh, indicators, and trade 
of African countries and regions. The Trade Law Center, or TRALAC, maintains an updated portal of regional and national trade related data. This includes copies of the texts and annexes of regional and bilateral trade agreements, copies of various regional protocols, uh, memoranda of understanding and tariff orders, as well as copies of national legislation and trade related policy documents. These resources can be accessed by, uh, by groups, or by, economic, uh, by regional economic groups and also by country. The AGOA data center uh, provides updated trade data relating to trade relations between the United States and Sub-Saharan Africa, on the other hand. The data in the AGOA trade center include comprehensive bilater bilateral trade flow data between US and the countries in the African region. Here are some practical news gathering questions for you as you embark on finding data for African countries. Find the latest data about your country's balance of payments and trade deficits or trade surpluses. Um, I would advise you to try and research trading patterns between your country and specific countries, and then identify your country's uh, biggest trading partners. See what kind of data you find. Ensure you find the latest data as you look at them. Investigate trading patterns between your region, now not just your country, but your region, and identify which countries have made trade surpluses and which ones have made trade deficits with, as a trade with one another. Also look at uh, what products uh, do they, with your countries post surpluses and in what products do they post deficits. As you do this, Speak to economists and other specialists to establish the factors that are underlying the patterns that you're observing. As you speak to specialists and other new sources, explore the relationship between trade and industrialization in your country and in your region. You will find that in some instances, the, the factors that you found when looking at the trade data can also maybe be represented in the way your country has developed in particular areas of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of economic development, for example, in, in some certain industries. Explore the emerging patterns of major global trading partners for your, for your region. For example, uh, the role of China, the role of the EU, and the role of the United States in trade and in the development of trade between your region and, and these major uh, global uh, trading uh, centers. Establish the extent to which there are favorable or unfavorable terms of trade between your region and those global trading partners. And then finally, investigate how countries in your region would work together to reduce unfavorable terms of trade. Now here, be creative in seeking solutions for your region. For example, the extent to which your region uh, could cooperate in trade and how they, the, such cooperation would hold the key in growing the favorable terms of trade for your region or for your, for your, for your people. What key questions as you prepare to embark on some of these uh, assignments, what key questions would you ask government officials in your country or in your region uh, regarding development of regional strategies to improve terms of trade. How would you approach a news assignment on the significance of African regional trade integration and sustainable development? How could you um, consider sharing your answer um, with your editorial team or with your supervisor? W what scope do you see for a major, for a number of well-researched news stories or articles on this subject. What role do you, do you think your news organization or your media organization plays in assisting your region in solving economic growth challenges? Um, and, and, and as you think about these questions, 
as you think about how do you answer them. Ensure that you always find reliable sources of data uh, that you can use for your country and for your region. Always supplement such data from those sources with additional data from your national government or from national, uh, national trade associations or regional trade associations. Once you begin monitoring and reporting on this data, you will notice that some global online portals are often one year or so behind in reporting their data. One important point is to utilize economic experts in your countries and officials of major organizations to help you interpret the trade data as well as explain to you discrepancies or differences that you may be observing in the data that you are correcting. One point here is important. Never allow yourself to take the place of a specialist. Even if you think and you feel that you understand the data and the issues that are involved. Instead, I advise you to always let your audiences identify you as a media practitioner who asks the right questions and gets the specialists to communicate effectively about those economic issues. Most of all, the, the best data that you collect, most of the data that you collect either quarterly or half yearly, endeavor to keep up and to ensure that you effectively communicate to your audiences or to your listeners or to your readers, communicate it every period, for example, every quarter or every half year or every month as new data is released. Your big idea while reporting on national and regional trade data should always be its link to the people. For example, after a good year of agricultural uh, harvest or in your, in your agricultural sectors, you should be able to use trade data to tell how the increased agricultural produce shaped intra-regional trade and vice versa. If there was a bad year in uh, the agricultural sectors, you should be able to use data to explain to your listeners or to your or to your to your communities how that is shaping intra-regional trade. To competently carry out regular reporting on trade and economic data, it is always important to maintain an updated list of specialists who are willing and are able to speak both on the record and off the record. Challenge yourself to get new stories with fresh angles each data cycle. Don't always do the same thing over and over again. Give some feedback to your editorial supervisor or to your editor about how this exercise has enriched your media practice. It's always nice to see also new sources or new specialists and ensure that you, you, you make sure that uh, they bring in a freshness in the way you report. Also, look out for media practitioners from your region with whom you could share some of your experiences or even collaborate on some important assignments. This is something we don't do enough, and I'm sure it would enrich your stories if you do some collaborative work with colleagues from either outside your country or from outside your, your region and uh, see how it works. I've included in your training package some, some examples of uh, trade deficit data from around Africa. Uh, I've shown you, for example, some stories about Egypt's uh, trade data and how um, the reporter went and found that the data, that the trade deficit had declined uh, during the period of August to September of 2019. And then you see them identifying the sources of that data, the movements up and down in the data, and they would look at both imports and exports and how uh, that data, uh, how the patterns had shifted over a period of two months. I have also included data, an example of uh, use of trade data from South Africa, from them, uh, a story written in the month of October, 2019. This story shows you how trade balance swung from a deficit to a surplus and the reasons why this happened. The reporter identifies uh, increased exports in mineral products and also a weaker or a falling oil price. This data is sourced from the South African Revenue Service. It's important to always indicate where the data comes from. The reporter also goes and finds specialists in the field and speaks to one who is an analyst. Her name is Elise Kruger, and then asks her, 
what do you think is causing this, uh, these shifts that we are observing? And then quotes Kruger talking within the story. One thing I would like to emphasize, do not quote your specialists saying technical data, like reporting them saying data. Instead, quote them saying some very, very human things. For example, this reporter quoted Elise Kruger, who is maybe an economist. This is what she said. She said, um, monthly trade statistics remain very volatile. Uh, thus, the, uh, the sizable trade surplus for August is welcomed. But it's not necessarily a reason to cheer because year-to-date figures suggest a moderate deterioration in the trade account so far for 2019. That's a good quote, and you can see that it's a human quote. You could also uh, sort of edit the sentences down. It's a direct quote, so you just split it and you, and you allow it to go into two sentences. But overall, it's a good human quote. I've also included a quote from uh, a data from Kenya. Also, for the this is from a story in uh, late November 2019. It looks at uh, trade deficit data for nine months up to September 2019, compared to the same period in 20 the nine months, the uh, first nine months in 2018. It looks at data which is uh, sourced from the Central Bank of Kenya. And, uh, and it also looks at the shifts. It tries to explain uh, what's going on in total imports and exports, the gap between the imports and the exports. And it also tells you about what were the key drivers in the shifts that were observed. It's a, it's a good story. What you don't see here is uh, independent specialists being quoted. That is something that you could bring in in your stories as you go forward. I've also included a story from Tanzania that uh, looks at uh, Tanzania's production of cashew nuts and how the story then is used to represent trade data. And it talks about that there is a decline in, uh, in exports of cashew nuts from Tanzania, and it shows the scale from so much, from 563 million uh, for the period of uh, January to September 2019, compared to 1 billion US dollars for the same period in 2018. The source is the Bank of Tanzania, that is the Central Bank of Tanzania. They issue a monthly economic review. The review that was looked at was for the month of October. You can see how the reporter was quick in finding the latest review from the Bank of Tanzania and finding a story within there. The story also identifies that there was an estimated production of about 90,000 tons and, uh, and, and now brings in the element of the season, the 18, the 2018, 2019 season, and when the exports happened. Oh, by the way, the same story also talks about other, other, other products, coffee and tea, where the value of exports increased and the underlying reasons, according to this report, is favorable weather conditions. This is a perfect story for you to look at. In your country, find some, find some uh, particular products, find uh, the most recent report, and see what it tells you with respect to your own country. And then also never, don't forget that you can also look for reports like this one from the Bank of Tanzania and look at several uh, reports over a year and see how they tell the story of different, uh, different products and, and, and offers you some data to reflect on those products. I've also included a story from, uh, this is from uh, the East African uh, newspaper, also looking at East Africa, it looks at trade data between the East African countries. This is in November 2019, and it looks like intra-Africa trade within the East African partner, uh, country partners uh, for the period of uh, uh, 2018 and, and what was going on. And it looks at the value of trade, it increases from about 6 billion US dollars uh, to 6 billion US dollars from five and a half billion dollars in 2017. That's a growth of 9.4% over those two years. And uh, the source of the story is uh, the Eastern East African Community Trade and Development Report for 2018. And then it also narrows down to how specific countries were, what were the trends for, for specific countries during this period. So it will tell you how Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, South Sudan, how they improved or how they increased 
their exports between one another. This is the kind of story that's going to continually tell us how intra-Africa trade is being developed and fostered and as we go forward and as we try to work through this uh, new uh, initiative that has been signed continentally. I've included a story here about the trade exchange for the oil basin countries. This is the countries that are along the Nile Basin and uh, there is Egypt, Sudan, and uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia. And it looks at how well they've been uh, exchanging goods and services. And the story talks about that, uh, that there is an increase of 25% in this, uh, in this area of the Nile Basin countries. This is actually quite interesting because it's not seen as something that the countries in this area have been uh, growing their trade. And I think it is something that we, we should look at and see how we could try and develop new stories out of it. You, you need to know how do you source data for your region? Where do you find the data? Where do you find the, the most recent reports? Where do you find specialists who can help you interpret uh, stories like this? And this is a perfect story. Uh, it came out in November 2019, and I would encourage you to look for stories like this in your region. I encourage you to do work like this and uh, best wishes in everything that you do. Bye-bye for now.